Hey friends. Hey, long time no see. So um, I'm just coming on today. It's uh, the 30th of January and I realize that I have not been very good to you and, and keeping you updated on what's going on here. So we're going to start doing some, I think we're going to do like a Monday, Tuesday kind of uh, check in live and let you know what's going on at the greenhouse and kind of get you inspired and, and excited for all the uh, greenery and the uh, flowers that are coming in. And today we have a seed unboxing. I order a lot of seed that we start. I'm starting some today. So I thought today was a perfect day to let you see how how we do things and, and what we have coming in. I'm dog sitting. So there's a dog here whining at me. So if you hear little noises in the background, it's Gigi and then my two grand puppies. And I'll show those in a second. <laughs> They're just wild. Um, anyway, the seeds that we get in right now that I'm planting, I'm planting today Lysianthus. Lysianthus has a really long germination and extremely slow to grow um, from seedling to get their first set of true leaves. It's just crazy long. So yeah, they're expensive for a reason because they're awesome in bouquets. I plant them in my gardens and then I use them for my fresh cut bouquets in the summertime here at the greenhouse. Maxi. And... Um, so Lizzie's are one of my favorites. Um, last year, I kind of had a crop fail. We had um, some of the, one of the, a couple of the trays. I didn't plant them in deep enough cells. And by cells, I mean, you know, how deep the um, plug trays are. We get plug trays. They're anywhere from like this to, you know, like a three inch um, plug tray. And the Lizzie's, I put in just a little bit bigger one this year. So, so that we have a little um, better luck, hopefully. Um, but I'm planting them and the seed is very expensive. So, that's it, between the seed, the germination, you got to heat them. At, so I have um, 20 feet of heat mat behind me over here um, that has, um, that we put the, 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 their germination mats, then they're at a temperature controlled thermostat. And that's how we start our seeds. I've started in the greenhouse last year. I used, I did the, um, I heated one of the greenhouses, but this gas prices this year are insane. And it's, you know, today is 28 below wind chill right now. Um, so I'm not going to be heating a balloon for this. We don't need that much space right now. So these seeds will be in my shop area on a, um, we have a big rack set up with lights and heat mats. And so we'll start all our seeds there and then we'll move out to the greenhouse. Um, we'll start the greenhouses. We'll start heating them up in uh, February. So late February, we'll start the first greenhouse, get it good and warm and thawed out and any, and get all set up for those little baby plants that are coming that last week of February they get shipped to me so that's what we do this time of year but I've got some I've got a box I start I open this one and then I've got two packages here so I was going to just open them and let you know what we have going on um so in this box this is from Johnny's Seeds and we order from several different uh, seed companies depending on what's available where and best pricing and you know shipping costs and all that thing so it's, it's a lot of a lot of consideration that goes into it but in this shipment I have um, the first thing oh I got some eucalyptus so I've got um, two packages of eucalyptus one is baby blue and silver dollar now on the on the eucalyptus I already have some going in the I, I cold stratified this type of seed cold stratification is you're just tricking the seed into thinking it's spring and that some seeds need that that hey it's spring kind of feel for them to germinate so I already have some of both of these varieties going this is just a second crop that I'll be planting but um, I cold stratify the the eucalyptus in my refrigerator in a paper towel and then I plant them out into the, the plug tray cells and so I'm pointing like you can see that but sorry 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 anyway so oh and so on to the lysianthus so lysianthus this year I've got um lavender uh, blue, which is like a purple. It's really pretty. Apricot. Mm, really good. And um, First Love, which is like a pink, I think. But um, they're fantastic. They come in these little packages. And I'll open one of these up. And they're in a vial. So each one of these little packages was like $20. So it's ridiculous. And there's, um, in this one, there is um, 
Oh, that one is not too bad. 500 seeds, 250, 100 to 250 typically for that kind of a price. It's crazy. I mean, you can go look at Johnny's seeds. It's, you know, I don't pay any different than you do, but they come in this little, oh, where's my camera? See that little, little tiny babies in there. And then um, I'll plant them and we'll get them going. And then like, like in 14 to 21 days, depending on the conditions and, you know, um, how humid and how warm it is, they'll germinate. But then they just, they just hold on. They hold on. They're stubborn. Um, I've got some yellow Lysianthus and some, what's this color? Um, Picotty. So a uh, Picotty is uh, like, a, 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 it's white with like a purple edge. So I'm excited about that one. I'll put this aside and then I've got some oh a new nasturtium seed I ordered from a different company this one is like a really pretty burgundy color so I'm excited about that and then I've got some so I like to grow for my cutting gardens I like to grow a lot of sunflowers um, so I've got the pro cut series here pro cut peach pro cut orange um, afternoon oh so okay so these two pro cuts reason I ordered pro cut series is it's pollenless so you know you have a, a a sunflower in a vase and it's sitting on the counter and it drops its pollen and it's messy and it's you know some people sneeze from it so we got some uh pro cut sunflowers that will be and i guess you can start these from um you can start them indoors early um i just don't do that i i plant them direct in the soil we have a um a garden way cedar so we just run our rows. It takes like five minutes to plant an entire row of these. So these are little packages. I've got some big packages coming too of like 5,000 just because we're going to succession plant throughout in our garden for cut garden. So a lot of what I'm doing today is for, for cut garden flowers. Um, I'm going to probably have some, um, like we did a CSA last year. We've done like seed trays before. I uh, didn't get to it last year, but I wanted to have like a flat, so 48 plants of cut flowers. So I'll put it together, have the cool things in there, the awesome things, and then we can um, sell those at a you know discount price if they're pre-ordered. And then you can have your cut garden varieties, like my favorites or something. If the Lizzie's work out, we'll probably get some of those in there for those people that are interested. But this is a Cosmos called... Um, um, uh, afternoon white it's just a big white fluffy beautiful cosmo flower again i love it for cuts and then i um have uh, a short variety zinnia called zinderella peach you know it's just a little bit like they don't get super huge so they're great for pots or boxes and containers um that would be something that you you could cut for short vases but typically then we have a ton of zinnias i absolutely love zinnias i'm going to plant my whole front yard in zinnias um, it's just stunning to look at. It's beautiful to cut and put in vases. They're just, they're, they're, um, they sh they're showy and they're awesome. So, um, and then a mahogany splendor hibiscus. I don't know if you have seen that before. We, we grow these at the greenhouse. It's just for their beautiful burgundy foliage. If you put it in a pot, it's going to get about maybe two to three feet tall. But if you put it out into the garden, it will get upwards of five feet. And, and they're fantastic. They're just gorgeous. And yeah, yeah, it's, you know, $4.99, $5.99 for one. But I'm telling you, it's like a tree. I mean, it is worth it, like, to have that. And I have used these um, in, in vases, too, as a filler. So, like, a really pretty burgundy um, filler. And then I've got some grape tomatoes. I've got my favorite kohlrabi seeds called Cossack. Cossack is a big kohlrabi that doesn't crack or split. It keeps in the ground awesome. Um, great taste. If you haven't tried kohlrabi, get a, get a kohlrabi this year. They're just kind of fun. I, I like to just cut them up and eat them raw with a little bit of salt on them because that's that's how I roll. So, um Great, another grape tomato that I have here called Valentine. Sounded fun. I'm going to try that. Um, and then I've got some hot peppers, um, some, oh, pro, another pro cut white. Pro cut whites are really pretty, pretty, um, pretty sunflower. And then I've got some Brussels sprouts in this. Okay, so this whole package that you just, I'll just hold up these packages of seeds. And just to let you know, like I, it is, it's expensive. Like this, this pile was $261. That's it. Yep. Yep. It's crazy. So things are, things are nuts as far as that, but you know, 
you know, in those, in those packages, there's 500 seeds, there's a thousand, there's, you know, different, you know, in some of the smaller seed varieties. So, um, we'll be planting those out and then you buy the four pack for, you know, three, four bucks. And, and, and that's why those prices are the way they are. The gas, the seed, everything. But anyway, I'm excited for getting going on some food. I've been growing some, um, seed mats too for my chickens. So I do like a, uh, broccoli sprouts and wheatgrass and mung bean and I just grow them so they get like a mat a week and it's just fresh greens and then um, I put the whole mat in there I put just a little thin layer of uh, uh, either germination mix or uh, soil um, or soilless mix and then that it can be their grit too to throughout throughout the winter months when they're not picking and foraging out in the yard then they can have um, that to get through their crops so um, but the, and then vitamins too, and it's something live and green. So, and they just love it. They go crazy. So, all right. So I'm opening another package and I think this is from Johnny's again. So Johnny's seed on this order, I, this order, I do have some, um, I think I ordered some, oh no, this is just, again, this is just flowers. Okay. So I, again, like I said, I love the zinnias. The zinnias that um, I really like are called Benary's Giants. I love their, you know, you can get just this, shush, <laughs> sorry. Um, you can get just the single like colors or you can get a mix. And I always buy the single colors so that I can, you know, I got yellow in this tray. I got purple in that tray. I got red over here. I got orange over there. And again, that would be something I would put into that seed tray csa for a cut flower bouquet garden um so this one's golden yellow Ooh, fantastic and then i am growing some uh um, sea holly or um thistle globe thistle i'm gonna be it, globe thistle is like a big it's like a purple kind of looks like a spiky you see it a lot in bouquets for weddings this time of year oh yeah i got two weddings this year i got two children getting married so i'm gonna be cutting my cutting garden's going so <laughs> I've got a lot to do this year. And then I got, um, this one is, um, it's called salt and pepper cucumber. It was a cucumber. I grew this last year in the greenhouse. Um, I had it for sale here and I'm telling you guys, it was fantastic. It's a all white cucumber and it is sweet and crispy. It's delicious and it looks fantastic in a salad. You know, if you're having company and, you know, I like to grow girl things a little bit weird here like I want to have something that is going to pique some interest that's off the normal path of, of things so we like to have unique here and this salt and pepper mm, I'm telling you you got to try them you got to try them because I they were by far my favorite like salad cuke this year and they're they're just like a pickling cuke they're only about that big and all white when they're ripe and I'm telling you sweet and crisp and then I've got some snapdragons. So I, I got an apricot colored one here. I, I love snaps too. It's probably one of my, up there on my top 10 for sure in the cut garden stuff. Just easy to grow. I'm going to have a ton of colors because I went nuts with seeds this year. And then I've got a red, which is a fantastic red. And a bronze, which is a dark orangey color. And what's this one? Ivory. Yeah, that one was fantastic too. And then I've got an um, Potomac yellow. So all kinds of, and then I've got pinks and roses already here in the, in the, um, in the greenhouse, we've already got some seed. So a lot of my seed too, like my retail seed is here. It's on site. We're getting it put up in the racks here in the next month here. But it, I've had it here. It's, it's a giant, you know, boxes. I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of seeds. But um, those will be put out too. So this is my, my seed. That's my second Johnny's seed haul. And then I've got another one here. We're going to open this guy up. I hope I'm not boring you because I'm pretty pumped about this. Especially I get to get my hands in the dirt today. Yay. Um, so this is another company. It's kind of a... Um, lesser known company that I get seed from and they have just some really unique varieties of things so I can if I can go find different things they have just huge lists and they have great Johnny's seeds is also really good for um, if you click on these you can get all kinds of growing information so if you have any questions about a specific variety or you know just go to like a 
uh, general, like if you want to know snapdragons, how to grow snapdragons, then just look at their site and there's like tabs on the top of each variety and you can really get some good information. Like, does it need light to germinate? What temperature does it like to germinate at? Does it need cold stratification? Does it need you know, whatever the things need. And then I keep that all in a list. And so that's another thing I'm working on this time of year is my production schedule. So we're starting to plant now. We're going to be planting all the way through. Um, I'll be planting seeds through the end of April. And then um, we'll go right into it. But we'll go right into, um, you know, so that I have succession plantings for offer here in four packs and singles and that sort of thing. So um, this next box has some I, I love holy basil if you guys don't know that I can I grow holy basil every year holy basil is an adaptogenic herb which means it just helps your body adapt to stresses in your environment um kind of helps you calm and that sort of thing and um I dry it so I grow them I dry them I use it fresh if I use it fresh then I steep it for a good you know few minutes like maybe 10 15 at least in some water and get the, all those and I use the flower and the leaf when it's fresh and then I put it in over ice in the summertime love it so my in my water jug you're gonna know that I have either mint or holy basil going at all times in the summertime and then in the winter time I dried a bunch and I've been um, using it in hot tea so it's really fun but this one's called um Holy basil chocolate bubble gum. Just sounded fun. I mean, because holy basil kind of has a unique taste. It's 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 interesting. Uh, how would I describe it? It's a little sweet, um, but definitely when they saw this bubble gum and chocolate bubble gum, I don't know. Got to try it. Going to give that a whirl. And then I have some of that, again, that globe or that um, thistle, globe thistle. Um, this one is nit or rit rit ritro blue, which is a nice, big, beautiful blue one. Um, I've got some kale. So this kale is called red boar. I'm going to be growing this one for um, ornamental reasons. So this will be something like a, a, maybe a fall crop I'll have, you know, so with like mums and um, maybe some uh, Swiss chard rainbow and, and then this in a pot, you know, just to get some different. It's purple ruffly leaves. It's awesome. And then I'm growing a herb called lemon bush. Just sounded interesting. Looks like it's good for cuts maybe. So we're gonna try that. See, again, I can't say no. So I just buy these weird things. Um, I've got some onions that I'm, we're gonna be starting here soon. So you'll have like the little um, onion starts. That's what we'll do. This one, oh, this, you guys are gonna love this. So I've got, um, these three packages are a pepper called lunchbox. So lunchbox is those little sweet peppers you get at the grocery store in like red, orange, and yellow. That's what these are. Uh, uh, we're going to grow them. We're going to grow them. Yeah, we're going to grow them. So we can have those little sweet peppers. Kids love these. You just do a little like cream cheese. You can have them and do a little cream cheese dip in there. Mm, can't wait. I can't wait for these. These are going to be awesome. So again, super expensive though because they're so popular. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then I got some poblano peppers. We've got some, I got one called Spanish Spice. I, you know, just, I got to try that. And then super chilies. I like super, super chili Thai. Super chili Thai is um, uh, one of those peppers that grows up like that on the, on the plant. And then I dry these and make my pepper flakes out of it. Or my husband uses it in his, um, his rubs for his smoker. So this is a good one for that. So we'll have that. Um, I'm going to grow pyrethrum. Pyrethrum is a, um, I'm going to try this. This is another one I was like, hey, I know what pyrethrum is. Pyrethrum is a, um, you can buy it as an organic pesticide. So it's a systemic organic pesticide. Um, and it's going to have, um, it, it's supposed to like, what do you call it? detract bugs and that sort of thing um the only problem i don't use pyrethrum a lot because we have bees out here and it when it, when we use pyrethrum on plants it is systemic so it stays in the plants for a few days and so you know the bees will come back out when it's warm so when i have a problem with bugs i use jacks and we do it later in the day because it only lasts on the plant for like three four hours so if we and we just stay on it you just got to stay on it jacks is an organic um, um, pesticide with, uh, 
um, spinosad in it. So, and that will, will spray on later in the day when the bees have gone to sleep and all, you don't see any activity going on the, on the plants, then you go out. So if I have any problems out in, and we don't, and in the greenhouses, I don't know if you guys know this, but we, we use beneficial insects. So if I have a problem with aphids or white fly, I get in predator, um, uh, plant, uh, bugs that come and eat and we just keep a system of that. It's called a preventative system that we put put in place. We get it shipped every other week. So every time a new, so they'll go and eat all that. And then when the hatching goes through and there's no more food, they they don't survive in our, in, in our Minnesota environment. So it's not like we're introducing the Asian beetle to anybody. We make sure of that. So, and then I've got some more snapdragons. This one's orange wonder. Gosh, I get, I, I, you guys, I can't say no. I can't say no, it's bad. It's a, it's a bad, 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 bad addiction I have so and then stock I don't know if you know stock stock is one of, another one of my cut favorites it's an early cool season type of crop and it um um smells so good spicy like think gumdrops that's what I always think of when I when I think of those like those spicy gumdrops um, but I've got apricot and pink and white and yellow and stock is again just like one of my favorite cuts so that might be in one of those CSAs if we do them early and then I found one called an um herb called orange thyme Sure. Yes, please. I want to try that. So we're going to be doing that. That's going to be starting pretty soon. And then um, I love my heirloom tomatoes. So we've got some Amish paste. We've got some Candyland red. That's a, oh yeah. So I'm doing some, <laughs> I get so excited. I'm doing my hanging baskets of tomatoes and we like to do like window box things. I like to have things that are, um, that are little like, uh, what do you call it? functional yet pretty so goodness gracious sorry about my phone um tomato candyland red is like something that's going to spill out and and hang over the side of something but be compact not take over a big huge pot so you could put it in with some flowers on your patio and have cherry tomatoes growing down and put your flowers around it i mean kind we got we got to get we got to we got to capitalize on all the space we have especially so start planning now so we'll have those cherry falls same concept and i there's this one's called um this is a cherry tomato called rapunzel oh, you guys you guys got i got i got to get better at these videos so i can show you pictures of things but these grow down in like a string like you know rapunzel's hair and they're like really long strings so i could i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't resist i want you to be i want you to be excited and um and and see something unique and and you know not your standards but we will have the standards too got to have those and then the last one is another tumbling type that's yellow a yellow tomato pepper or, or tomato cherry tomato that's yellow so that's just a tiny tiny again this package was mm, 280 i think for that um but you know we we like to grow things so i just wanted to show you that i hope it didn't bore you i get so excited about it and i hope you're getting excited too so we'll be showing you some videos of our um production as we go through here and um we just want you to get excited so thank you for watching today and um if you have any questions please comment below um, we will be trying to, there's so many you guys i have over 500 varieties of seeds 500. I've had people ask if I'm going to be posting my varieties, but 500, you guys, you, you get bored. I mean, maybe you're bored after this video. <laughs> anyway, I, if you want to know a specific variety that we'll be carrying that, but we'll try to, we're going to try to get all of that um, onto our, like our posts in the next few weeks. So you can kind of plan ahead. I've had a lot of people like, they don't want to go shop around. They want to know where they can stop for all of it. We do try to have everything, you know, but it is impossible to have absolutely everything. As long as, as, as well as all these seeds that we're doing, we are doing some propagation of other things. I'm looking around my room here. I've got plants everywhere. And, um, we just are going to, we have perennials coming like crazy bulbs, perennials gladiolas i'm working on right now so um if there's things like that that you're interested in just reach out give me a comment below give us an email give us a call um 
We do check our phone messages once a day. And so if, if you have any questions that are urgent, you can you know do that. Or if you want to just start an email train with me, that's fine too. Um, but comment and thanks for watching today. And we just hope on this very cold day that you're getting excited about planting because we are. So again, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.